A number of my friends are going to tell you a true story about Jesus. You all have parts in your story. You are the crowd of the people. All of the 5,000 people can help you with your parts because the crowd was huge. Actually, 5,000 people. I already told you that. I need you to practice your part now. When you see the sign, you have to say we're hungry like you really mean it. Can all of you say that? We're hungry, we're hungry. I need all of you guys back there too. Come on. Okay, say it one more time. Louder, everyone. We're hungry. All right. Now there's the other sign. When you see this sign, you need to shout out yum like you really mean it. Come on, everyone. One, two, three, go. I think we're ready. Okay, let's get started with a story. One day, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee with his disciples. A large crowd was following him to see the miracles he was doing and listen to the things he was telling them. Jesus sat down on a hillside, and the crowd sat down with him. It was lunchtime, and the people were beginning to get hungry. The disciples did not know what to do. The people needed some food, but they were far away from a village, and there were no Burger Kings around by the Sea of Galilee. Jesus, what do we do? We're hungry. So Jesus asked the disciples where they could buy bread for all of the people. Where can we buy bread for all the people? Jesus said this to test their faith in him. <laughs> the disciples did not know. We don't know, Jesus. Then a little boy came out of, from the crowd. Jesus, I have these five loaves and two fish. I don't know if they will help, but it is all I have to give you. Jesus smiled at the little boy, then took the food and prayed over it. Dear Father, thank you so much for this food. Please bless the people who receive it. Amen. Um, then Jesus gave the food to all of the people, and they ate and ate until they were full. Then Jesus told his disciples to gather up the leftover food. Here's some Tupperware. Get the leftovers. <laughs> there were 12 baskets full of leftovers, all from five loaves and two fish that were shared by one little boy. God performs great miracles when we share. We all need to share. Let's end with a beautiful prayer, people. Fold your hands. I don't see everyone. All right. Let's end with a prayer. Okay. Dear God, you could do all great things. Help us be a part of your beautiful miracle by sharing with others. Help us especially share our food with the hunger. Amen. Thank you for coming, people. You can go back to your seat. 2,000 years ago, Jesus fed 5,000 people from a little boy's donation of five loaves of bread and two fish. This classic Bible story is often told to kids in Sunday school because a young boy is very generous. The boy hears Jesus and his disciples talking about what to do. The disciples are confused and unsure how to answer Jesus' request for food. The boy is not. The boy immediately takes action. He offers all of his food to Jesus. When our class discussed this Bible story, we thought of the sport ad from Nike that says, Just do it. Why is this phrase so catchy? That is simple. We overthink everything. Our worries and fears and overplanning keep us from acting. Jesus wants us to act. In 1990, a youth group held the first Super Bowl of Caring food collection after their young pastor prayed, Lord, even as we enjoy the Super Bowl football game, help us be mindful of those who are without a bowl of soup to eat. The following year, they recruited 55 other churches to join the cause. The movement continued to grow. In the last 25 years, over $100 million have been raised to feed the hungry with the Super Bowl of Caring donations. However, the need continues. We have far more than a crowd of 5,000 to feed. There are approximately 50 million people currently, currently suffering from a severe hunger in the United States. Like the disciples, it is easy for us to consider it impossible to feed the hungry crowd. 
In fact, our donations may seem as silly as offering 5,000 people five loaves of bread and two fish. However, as people of faith, we believe in miracles. We believe that God can use us to do extraordinary things. We believe that even our smallest donations can make a difference. Thank you for joining us as we worship Jesus, who entrusts us with this mission to feed our neighbors. Was a, uh, one of my favorite authors is a guy named Jim Wallace. And uh, Jim Wallace went to seminary in the early 1970s, and he had this uh, experiment with some of his classmates, which the experiment was to read the Bible from beginning to end, which doesn't seem like a dramatic thing for a seminarian studying to be a pastor doing. But the uh, experiment was simple. They each had a pair of scissors. And as they read through the Bible, what they were looking for were passages in which God showed concern for the poor or the hungry or the needy. So the, you, reading through the book of Exodus was nearly wiped out, God's concern for the Israelites and freeing them, liberating them. Uh, you get to the story of Ruth, that's pretty much wiped out. You read stories in the Psalms, they're gone. Lamentations, certainly that's gone. The, almost the entire prophets are gone. You get into the New Testament, and a lot of what Jesus talked about was concern for the poor. The Gospel of Luke is almost wiped out. He uh, basically snipped every passage that way, and he would often go around and hold that Bible up, and it was just shreds, just literally shreds. And it, I think it's, it's an important image for us to, re, to remind ourselves that if we don't show concern for the poor and needy, basically the Bible falls apart, and who we are called to be as God's people falls apart. When we talk about just doing it, putting our faith into action, you realize what you're doing is restoring biblical integrity and you're helping restore who God's people are supposed to be. Simple things like bringing our food to share is one way we bring that Bible back to the way it should be. Uh, you know, our, I was told uh, we, we've collected almost a thousand cans today, $250. Patriots are going to win based on our uh, thing today, uh, but who cares about that? Uh, this month we talk about really what we're doing in the community as a congregation. It's, it feels like we're feeding the world and we really need a massive team effort to do some of the things we're talking about. Uh, the community-based shelter starts two weeks from now. We're uh, providing a meal every day of the week, three meals a day, and we really need support for that. So if you're interested in that, sign up in the lobby today. But our, our kids are going to do the world a uh, 30 uh, hour fam in the end of the month. Last year they raised $10,000, which is one of the largest amounts of a teen group in the nation. And we know they'll go beyond that uh, this year. But we have this ongoing ministry to the Goody Drive Men's Shelter, and we need uh, help and more leadership to emerge in that. Uh, just the ongoing uh, efforts we have in the congregation are great, but this is a great month to get involved. But I, I want you to just keep that in mind. This is powerful story of John 14, a little kid who could have said, I'll just keep it all for myself, stepped forward and said, what I have to offer makes a difference. Anything you offer makes a difference for the good of the order, and it's amazing what can actually happen. Thanks be to God. Amen.